Welcome to this webinar on the General Services Charges Fund and Maintenance Reserve Fund under the Retirement Villages Act in Queensland. My name is Gillian and I'm a project worker with the Queensland Retirement Village and Park Advice Service, or CURFPAS for short, which is a service within Caxton Legal Centre. I would like to start by acknowledging the Turbul and the Yagara people, the traditional owners of the land on which Caxton Legal Centre is located and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. This webinar is for residents in retirement villages in Queensland. This webinar contains general information, not legal advice. If you need legal advice, please contact CurvePass directly to discuss your matter. I'll provide an introduction to CurvePass and guidance from the Retirement Villages Act in Queensland on the General Services Charges Fund, the Maintenance Reserve Fund, fee increases, budgets, and your right to request information as a resident. The Queensland Retirement Village and Park Advice Service provides specialist advice and information to residents or prospective residents of, re of retirement villages and manufactured home parks. It is a free statewide service funded by the Queensland Government Department of Housing and Public Works. Turning to the fees and charges that you may be liable for as a resident in a retirement village. The ingoing contribution is a one-off payment securing the right to reside. Personal services charges are payable for, for personal services which may be optional, such as laundry, cleaning and meals. All fees should be clearly outlined in the disclosure documents and residence contract that form your agreement to live in the retirement village. You must be provided with these documents before you decide to move into the village. So this webinar focuses on the general services charges and the maintenance reserve fund contributions. The general services charges is an ongoing charge payable by all residents and is used to maintain common services and facilities in the village. It's paid into a general services charges fund, which may only be used for providing general services to residents. The way your general services charge is calculated should be set out in the disclosure documents you received before you moved into the village. The general services charge is likely to be payable for a period of time after you move out. And it's important to be, be aware of this when considering moving into a retirement village. This charge can increase during your time in the retirement village and is likely to do so. Your disclosure documents should record any increase in the general services charge in the three years prior to your entry into the village. The yearly increases may also exceed CPI increases. This can be for a number of reasons, including increased running costs for the village. Turning to the maintenance reserve fund contributions. This covers the day-to-day -day maintenance and repair of capital items within the village. Residents are solely responsible for contributing towards the maintenance reserve fund. This fund is used to repair and maintain the capital items. The budgets for the maintenance reserve fund are determined with reference to a written report by an independent quantity surveyor about the expected maintenance and repair costs for the village for the next 10 years. This must be a full report every third financial year from 2009 and in any other financial year in which substantial changes have been made to the retirement village. In other years, an updated report can be used. In addition to contributions to the maintenance reserve fund, Residents may also take on responsibility for maintaining and repairing items within their unit. This might fall under the resident's contract. For example, stoves, fridges and air conditioners. But what is a capital item? You can find more information in our webinar on capital items within retirement villages. Of course, there are also other costs for residents. 
This can include insurance, which might be personal insurance or home and contents. Um, you should check what kind of insurance contracts are required under your residence contract. Also personal expenses, capital improvements. So if you request a capital improvement to your unit, you will be responsible for the cost of this. Capital improvements are defined as the first time provision of a capital item. So this might be installing a new air conditioning unit or having the kitchen renovated. There are also costs of leaving the village and the costs of leaving are discussed in more detail in the webinar on leaving the village. So meet Margaret. Margaret moved into Peony Place Retirement Village in 2017. She paid $350,000 for a 99 year lease on a two bedroom detached villa. She pays $100 per week in general services charges and maintenance reserve fund contributions and also pays personal services charges. In August 2020, Margaret has received a notice from the village which says her, her general service charge fund contributions will be increasing by 20% to $120 per week. Margaret is concerned that the increase is too high. So what should she do next? What does the law say? The general rule is the actual increase of general services charges fund contributions imposed on residents must be calculated in accordance with the residence contract and cannot increase above the consumer price index or CPI. Under the Retirement Villages Act, CPI means the all groups consumer price index for Brisbane published by the Australian statistician. A CPI percentage increase for a financial year means the percentage increase between the two quarters ending 30 June for consecutive years. As Margaret's general services fund contributions have increased by more than CPI, she's concerned that the increase is excessive. However, there are some exceptions to this general rule. There are two ways a retirement village can increase the general services charges fund contributions by more than CPI. The first is if the residents pass a special resolution under one, section 106 of the Retirement Villages Act. This will generally occur at an annual or special meeting of residents. Residents must be given at least 21 days written notice prior to the meeting, stating the intention to propose a resolution as a special resolution. The resolution must be approved by at least three quarters of residents entitled to vote. A special resolution under section 106 could relate to approval of a new general service for residents, or it could be in relation to increased costs for an existing general service. The Queensland Civil and Administrative Tribunal, or QCAT, has considered a dispute about increases to general services charges in the 2012 decision of Ash and Australian Retirement Villages Limited. In that matter, QCAT found that as long as the total of general services charges for the year does not exceed the allowed CPI percentage increase, it is not necessary to pass a special resolution for individual line items in the budget that increase by more than the CPI percentage. The other exception is if there is an increase in rates, taxes, insurance premiums, or salaries payable by the village. And this comes from section 100, 107 of the Act. From the, the 11th of November, 2019, the maintenance reserve fund contributions must be paid into a separate fund. Previously, these contributions were part of the general services charges fund and could also be a basis on which general services charges could increase by more than CPI. Maintenance reserve fund contrib contributions can be adjusted annually under the Act. In practice, although these, these contributions have been separated under the Act, 
many res residents have continued to pay one payment of general services charges from November 2019, and the operator separates the portion of the maintenance reserve fund charges after payment. Turning next to annual budgets. An annual budget must be adopted annually for the general services charges fund. This must be in the approved form if one has been issued by the Queensland Government. Presently, no approved form has been issued. Village operators must consider the most cost-effective ways of providing services to residents before proposing an increase to the general services charge. If expenditure exceeds this budget, the Residence Committee may ask the village operator for an explanation. Likewise, the village operator also needs to adopt a maintenance reserve fund budget annually, also using the approved form and no, no form has been issued as yet. From the 11th of November 2019, the village must adopt a maintenance reserve fund budget that is consistent with the quantity surveyors report, which I mentioned earlier in the webinar. Previously, a village operator could use its best endeavours to implement the report, but that discretion has been removed. There is one exception. The maintenance reserve fund budget may deviate from the surveyors report to the extent that the residents agree by special resolution to allow this. Fees often increase each financial year when village operators set budgets for the general services charge fund and maintenance reserve fund. The village operator must keep separate compulsory funds for different fees payable in the village. The budgets for these funds must be in the approved forms if these have been issued. And every year, the village operator must call a residence meeting to discuss the audited annual financial statements of the village. As a resident or as part of the residence committee, you have a right to request certain information about the budgets. A resident or the residence committee may request a copy of the draft maintenance fund reserve fund budget at least 14 days before the beginning of the financial year. This comes from section 99, subsection four of the Retirement Villages Act. In addition, a residence committee may request a copy of the draft general services charges fund budget for the financial year, again, at least 14 days before the beginning of that financial year. And this comes from section 102A, subsection four. The residence committee may also request an explanation as to why the expenditure of providing a general service exceeds the budget. And this could happen throughout the year. This comes from section 112A of the Retirement Villages Act. Residents also have other rights to request information. As a resident, you can request quarterly financial statements of up to the last two completed financial years and annual financial statements presented at the most recent annual meeting of the residents of the retirement village. Operators of retirement villages must ensure that a quarterly statement about the income and expenditure of the capital replacement fund, maintenance reserve fund, and the general services charge fund for the last two completed financial years is given to you on your request. The operator must provide these within 28 days of the request being made. From March 2020, the operator must include both the income and expenditure of the general services charge fund for the financial year. Within five months after the end of each financial year, the village operator must provide to you on request the financial statements showing the details of the retirement village operation. If you think you are being overcharged, request information from the village operator, check your contract and seek legal advice. If the village breaches the act in relation to fee increases, a resident can start a retirement village dispute. They can also make a formal complaint to regulatory services, which is a unit within the Department of Housing and Public Works 
who may prosecute the village for breaching the Act. Recall that the Residence Committee can ask for an explanation of why General Services Charges expenditure varies from the expected budget for the financial year. Margaret and other residents may be concerned about this large increase and approaching the Residence Committee to seek information from the village operator is a great first step. Briefly, the three-step dispute resolution process where you can find more information about this in our webinar on this topic. Step one is the preliminary negotiation. In this, as a resident, you can give written notice to the village, setting out the issues in dispute. In this notice, you nominate a day for the parties to meet and negotiate, which must be no earlier than 14 days after the notice has been given and the village must respond within seven days of receiving this notice and agree to meet or propose another time. After this, the parties then meet to discuss. Meetings at this first stage via telephone or using video chat applications like Skype or Zoom may be sufficient. If step one does not resolve the issues in dispute, the next step is applying to the Queensland Civil and Administrative Tribunal for a referral to mediation. Finally, step three is applying to QCAT for a hearing. You must follow this process, except in some special circumstances. More information is in our webinar on dispute resolution under the Retirement Villages Act. How to access Curve Pass. You can contact our reception on 07 3214 to book an appointment for legal advice. If you would like advice on behalf of a residence committee or an informal group of residents, please tell us when booking as you will also need to get assigned authority from the other members of the group. Thanks for joining me today.